Following the disastrous attempt at trying to save my absolutely terrible laptop with Intel Celeron NG840, Intel HD Graphics Bay Trail and 4GB of RAM using lossless scaling in that video I made a while ago, I recently became determined to make lossless scaling actually do something useful instead of destroying the already mediocre performance in games. And after reading a few comments claiming that I'm not doing this or that correctly, I think I figured out the trick behind getting lossless scaling to work properly. Now, just like in the previous video, I'll keep the scaling mode at auto and full screen, although according to this comment, setting the scaling mode to custom and the scaling factor option to 1 and also setting the scaling type option to off can help with the performance. But if you're gonna be playing at a resolution lower than your desktop one, what this does is it keeps the size of the game window while adding huge black bars around it. Either way, when I did some testing with his settings, I only noticed like a 5 to 10% drop in the utilization of the integrated GPU when the frame generation is working correctly. So yeah, there's really no point in using these settings unless you're gonna be playing in native resolution. Since I mentioned scaling tab, I'll be using mostly the integral scaling type in this video as it's a very lightweight one, though you can also use nearest neighbor or sharp by linear to get the same result. But just stay away from the other types and you'll see why later on. I also enabled vSync to ensure maximum stability and no screen tearing and although some people claim that changing the capture API can also improve the performance, on this PC I did not notice any performance difference between the three available options, so I'm just gonna keep it at DXGI as it is by default. And yeah, that's it, without any further ado, let's see if lossless scaling can actually save my potato laptop this time around. The first game that we're going to try out more like we visit is of course GTA 5, which I'm running with a crap ton of mods and a heavily modified config file. You can watch this video if you want to find out how I made the game look like this crap. I mean, even the crappy fake GTA games from the Play Store look like next gen masterpieces at this point, but hey, if it's what it takes to run GTA 5 on a Celeron that gets crushed by Coach Udos from 2006 and integrated graphics that are worse than the GeForce 210, then let it be. If you've watched the previous lossless scaling video, you might remember those silky smooth and blazing fast 6 FPS that we got with LSFG 2.1 Motex 3. Even with the older LSFG 1.1, it was still crawling slower than a snail. Well. I figured out a fix. If you go to the config file of the game and lower the resolution to 512 by 288 that's right even lower than 640 by 480 and also disable the frame scaling mode by setting this value to 0 cause I found out it's pretty much useless when running lossless scaling in these ultra low resolutions and yes I will keep the frame rate cap this time around. This is how small the game window is without scaling to show you guys that yes I'm playing in windowed borderless mode. Before I get 1000 comments claiming to start run the game in full screen instead of windowed slash windowed borderless. So let's go! And oh my god, it is actually working properly this time. Oh yeah, just look at how smooth like butter, 25 to 30 FPS. In GTA 5, on an Atom based 10 year old Celeron that's worse than 18 year old processors. Like, that is insane to think about. I remember first trying out GTA 5 on the same laptop back in 2021. I was struggling to get 10 FPS and the game was stuttering like crazy after some minutes of playing. And now I got it running at a relatively stable 30 FPS on this piece of crap. It's just crazy. Of course it isn't super stable as there is still the occasional small stuttering and texture or two disappearing when driving fast which happens even without lossless scaling. And yes we can all agree that these graphics and resolution are horrible, however there isn't too much input latency nor artifacting. Even in Jack's Hill which is the most GPU intensive area in GTA 5, the Intel HD Bay Trail had no trouble handling lossless scaling frame generation 1.1. 
so I consider this a massive success. But before I get the other type of comments saying that I should have used FSR or LS1 or whatever scaling type, let's see the performance with LS1 which admittedly works pretty well on better Intel HD graphics but not these ones unfortunately. The beloved FSR scaling type which everyone claims that it improves the performance cause everything related to FSR improves the performance, right? Right! And finally, NVIDIA image scaling. Massive fail for NVIDIA! And if you use LSFG 2.3 Motex 2 instead, well, it's gonna run like absolute utter shit anyway. Oh, and don't you dare try to achieve 60 FPS with Motex 4, because it's just not gonna happen as you can see. Unless you play at 144p. Yup, it's time to achieve peak next-gen graphics in 1440p. Oh sorry, I meant 144p. As well as the highest graphics possible, in terms of crappiness of course. Damn, look at the game window, it's so big, that's what she said. Let's also disable the vehicles and pedestrians using simple trainer for the walls, and let's see those majestic 60fps. Bruh. Yup, this is it guys. If you ever wondered if your potato seller on that slower than CPUs from 2006 can run GTA 5 at almost 60 FPS, well, in a way it can. It's just gonna look like weird 8-bit pixel art. Jesus Christ, Michael, calm down! Next up, let's test GTA 5's predecessor, GTA 4, one of the most notorious PC ports ever. I have the complete edition version of the game downgraded to 1.0.7.0. I'll be running the game using my low end mod, which you can download from the link in the video description using the super low preset, as well as the wonderful 512 by 384 resolution. And before someone dares to comment that I'm using full screen instead of windowed, I added this command in my command line document to make the game run in windowed mode. I locked the frame rates to 15 and now I'm using frame generation 1.1, as well as the integer scaling type once again. You know what guys? For such weak hardware, this is a really nice experience. The fact that it runs at flat 30 FPS with frame generation enabled is really impressive. I know it looks pretty ugly still with these low poly cars and trees, but I mean this is GTA 4 guys, one of the worst optimized games out there, and it's running very smoothly here, no stuttering whatsoever. Yes, there is some artifacting, but remember that this is being upscaled from 15 FPS, so it's to be expected of course. At least there isn't really any input latency. Now, you can probably notice that the utilization of the Intel HD graphics is almost maxed out, so we are really pushing the limits here even at the gorgeous 512 by 384 resolution, meaning that any more demanding scaling type or any higher resolution than 512 by 384 is out of the question. You might notice some drops to say 25 or in rare cases 20 FPS in really intensive areas or when there is a lot going on which you could solve if you don't use any scaling type or use an even crappier resolution. Still, this is really impressive coming from the little beige rail system on a chip Celeron. If you guys want to play at 60 FPS with frame generation 2.3 Motex 4 however, well, you have to use 144p resolution once again and the potato preset of my low end mod, but yeah, just like in GTA 5, it is possible, kinda. We are getting 50 FPS though it looks worse than Game Boy games once again, but yeah, it can be done. Sleeping Dogs, where I honestly had by far the most success when I tested lossless scaling on this PC last time, even if the experience was still crappy. This time, however, I capped the frame rate to 15 once again, 
By the way, cut the frame rate using Weaver Tuner instead of the built-in frame limiter because it's a little bit buggy and instead of the 640x400 resolution, I'm using the slightly worse 512x384 resolution, just like in GTA 4. I'll be using RSFG 1.1 just like previously for obvious reasons and let's go! Oh my god, why? Alright, what about 400 by 300 then? Okay, so now it's working fine. Although the frame generation is working fine now that we're playing at 400 by 300, I wouldn't exactly call this an amazing experience, guys. I mean, it feels a little bit slow motion -y when it's capped at 15 slash 30 FPS with lost scaling, plus there are many drops from 30 slash 15 FPS because the CPU is bottlenecking the integrated GPU. It happens in general even without lost scaling, that's how weak the Celeron N2840 really is. Oh, and most of the text is completely unreadable at 400 by 300, which could screw you up in certain situations. So yeah, not exactly the greatest experience in Sleeping Dogs unfortunately, but at least worse scaling also works here. Here's a really cool way to steal a vehicle in Sleeping Dogs. Let's try to steal this truck using that really cool way. Yeah, come on, you can do it way. There we go. Man, do I love this game. What did also run like poop in the previous video, but now works quite well with lost scaling however, thanks to a few optimization tricks, is the best optimized Assassin's Creed game ever, Assassin's Creed Rogue. What optimization tricks you may be asking? Well, if you want the game with the lowest settings and windowed borderless mode, then tap out of the game by pressing F8 or Alt plus tab, lock the frame rate to 15, right click on your desktop and go to the display settings, then go to advanced display settings, display adapter properties, list all modes, choose the 640x480 resolution, click OK then apply, then return back to the normal display settings and lower your desktop resolution to that resolution I struggle to pronounce. Finally, use was the scaling frame generation 1.1 instead of 2.3 because you know why, you can actually run Assassin's Creed Rocket Silky Smooth 30 FPS. And it's honestly not too bad as I said earlier. At least it's not really running in slow motion at 15 slash 30 FPS unlike in Sleeping Dogs. And you can actually sort of read the in-game text at that resolution I can't pronounce. You just got to admire the fact that Ubisoft actually optimized this Assassin's Creed game, unlike the other games in their franchise. Though by this video's logic GTA 4 is also a well-optimized game. You know what? Maybe GTA 4 is in fact a well-optimized game, cause it one with no textures disappearing and random stuttering unlike GTA 5, but back to Assassin's Creed. There is a little bit of input latency, which is mostly noticeable when you're countering enemy attacks, but it's not too serious. The artifacting is also quite noticeable as to be expected, you will see some drops from 30 slash 15 FPS on the Celeron N2840 in very CPU intensive areas or doing naval battles, but hey, the fact that you can now play Assassin's Creed at smooth 30 FPS most of the time on this potato is really nice. Now, we won't be revisiting Dark Souls 2 and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the original one obviously, because I couldn't figure out how to run these games in ultra low resolutions, meaning that loss scaling is pretty much out of the question for these games on the Intel HD graphics Bay Trail, and also Quake 3 because, um, why should I revisit a game that already runs at 150 FPS by default anyway? Yeah, this is one of the few games in the world that run in triple digit FPS on the little Celeron, 
but that's a topic for another day. What we will revisit however is Half-Life 2. I'm running it here in the 640x480 resolution in windowed mode of course, as well as the highest settings with the exception of the anti-aliasing. This time I'm actually using a 2004 version of the game, you can see right here it says build 2187, which is the very first retail build of the game. Even though we can get 60 plus FPS easily in less demanding areas, as soon as we go outside the Celeron starts struggling a bit and the frame rate drops to as low as the low 30s. <laughs> you want 60 FPS? No problemo! Just lock the frame rate to 30 and let the 8 bit duck do the job. Easy peasy! Wait, how is it running worse than before once again? Oh, apparently I missed something very important. Yeah, you have to play it at the free training by 240 resolution. Well, look at that! We're now getting beautiful 60 FPS, with a few stutters here and there, but it is what it is. And guys, if you want to make it look less pixelated, remember that you can squint your eyes to apply some anti-aliasing. Alternatively, you can use 144p resolution and change the scaling type to AMD FSR, which is the goated scaling type for Intel HD graphics Baytrail, at least according to all those RTX 1490 commenters. Yeah, just look at that beautiful FSR and flawless frame generated 40 FPS in 144p in a 20 year old game. A true next-gen eye candy. Imagine your PC being so terrible that it can't run Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005 in max settings. Yup, this is the original Need for Speed Most Wanted, which I'm running using the highest settings because come on, this is a really old game. I'm also using the widescreen mode by the way. As you can see here, we're struggling to get 15 FPS here. It is absolutely crazy. This should give you a good idea of how much of a potato my lowered laptop really is at this point. But can Wosley Scaling turn those 15 FPS with max settings into 30? Well it can, but with a catch. First of all, lock the game's frame rate to 15. Then go to your game folder, then go to the scripts folder of the widescreen mod if you've installed it. If not, I'll share the link for the mod in the video description. Then open the widescreen fix.nfl with notepad. Now change the windowed mode value to 1 to make Need for Speed run in windowed borderless mode for worthless scaling to work. Then we need to change the res x and y values to 512 and 288 respectively. So we'll be playing Most Wanted 2005 in 512 by 288 just like we did with GTA 5. Yeah. Also a quick reminder to use AOS FG 1.1 and any of the free aforementioned lightweight scaling types that I mentioned in the beginning. And it works. So yeah guys, if you want to experience Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005 in max settings on your old Intel Celeron N2840 laptop, well we're gonna have to play at poor eyesight mode. And considering the super low resolution that we're playing at right now, you might be asking yourself if there's any benefit of using Wasse scaling at this point, since the Intel HD page rail should be able to get 30 plus FPS even without frame gen in such a low resolution. To test this, I want the game at the exact same resolution, but I removed the frame rate cap and frame gen, and crazily enough, the Celeron ended up bottlenecking its own iGPU, and I was actually struggling to get 30 FPS. So as crazy as it sounds, there might be a benefit to using Wasley Scaling in this situation. If you want to use AirSafe G2.3 Mode X4 to achieve 60 FPS, however, then you're gonna have to use 256 by 144 resolution yet again. Oh wait, never mind, it can't even reach 40 FPS. Yeah, I think you probably understand why you shouldn't use AirSafe G2.3 on this integrated graphics. Oh, turn around, turn around! I wanna jump off the Burj Khalifa and put myself through this shit. As for an RPG game, we've got some Skyrim. Not the special edition for good reasons. 
while using glow settings in general but I increased the throw distance a bit because trust me you don't wanna play with objects and enemies appearing 2 meters in front of you. I'm also using windowed mode of course and I lowered the resolution to 384p from the config file to give some breathing space for the integrated graphics. You know what guys? I think the Celeron is doing a not too bad for job running Skyrim, although it is definitely struggling to achieve 30 FPS especially in this town area, so it's time for some lossless scaling. So with the frame rate locked to 15 once again and LSFG 1.1, let's see if we can maintain solid 30 FPS. And it is doable. Okay, maybe not really because the utilization of the Intel HD graphics is almost completely maxed out. In fact, it is actually maxed out in some instances. So when there are a lot of effects on screen during battles for example, well it's gonna be bad. So you might want to drop the resolution a bit further. Actually, you should drop the resolution a bit further because then the text is gonna be unreadable, which is not exactly what you want in an RPG game where you read a lot of text. If you have a laptop with this Celeron or similar, would you guys use process scaling in Skyrim? I mean it works, but given that you have to use a super low resolution and especially the nature of this game, I'd much rather play at 640x400 or even 800x600 in full screen. And as for a multiplayer game, we've got one of the greatest masterpieces ever, Stumble Guys. Which I'll be playing at 320x200 using LSFG 1.1 of course, with the FPS locked at 30 from the in-game settings. If you want the ultimate multiplayer experience with your fellow Celeron friends using lossless scaling, just download Stumble guys, the game is free to play and only eats up 1GB of storage, it runs even on the worst potatoes you can harvest. Use my settings and have fun. Pro tip, you might have to wear glasses just like me after playing for more than 10 minutes. Finally, as for some emulation, I tested some GTA Vice City stories using the PPSSPP emulator while upscaling from a window in the resolution of the PSP itself and we saw an increase in the FPS from the 30 FPS in-game cap to 40 FPS, so I'm not sure if I could consider this a success or not. After that, I played a bit of Crash Bandicoot in windowed mode using the PCSXR emulator and although I wasn't able to get MSI Afterburner to run in the background, it does work, yeah, cause it's smoother than before, I can feel it. Then finally, I ran The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, a Nintendo 64 game from 1998, using an old version of Project 64. And yes, I had used the resolution of the N64 itself, but it did double the FPS from 20 to 40, and I was actually able to afford using the RS1 scaling type instead of the integer one that I had used in all the other games, which did make the game look a tad nicer in that beautiful resolution. So, in conclusion, can lossless scaling actually save your potato PC? Well, it mostly depends on what GPU you have. If your GPU is extremely low end like the Intel HD graphics page rail in this case for example, you will have to stick to extremely low resolutions like 640x480, 512x384 or even lower and that is for upscaling from 15 to 30 FPS. If you want to upscale from 30 to 60 FPS, you're gonna have to go for even lower resolutions, even in titles from around 20 years ago, and it's just not worth it. And just stay away from RSFG 2.3, because unless you play games in like 144p, it's just not gonna work well at all. The thing is, the Celeron in this video itself, despite being the potato that it is, doesn't struggle with handling losses scaling itself. We're just limited by the horrible iGPU. This means that if you have a decent enough dedicated GPU, provided you use the right settings, you could likely get worse scaling to upscale games on PCs with some really, really weak processors. 
That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the quest of getting Wasteless Scaling to work on an absolutely slow laptop. I'm sorry for harming your eyesight with these crazy low resolutions, but well, it was a necessary sacrifice. Go watch the latest Batman Arkham Knight video where I managed to run the game at 60 FPS on the much faster Intel HD 630 using ultra settings, it was really crazy. Or just watch any of my GTX 1050 videos from the playlist. Otherwise, I wish you a very good day.